Hi guys, this is Kaylin Cole, your Midwestern hippie. Uh, feel free to check out my soul country music on all platforms. And you are listening to Hank Jr. on Hank's Corner. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting episode of Hank's Corner. I'm your host, Hank Jr., part of Hank Jr. Productions, where you know I'm documenting life's moments through photography, videography, and, of course, podcasting. And uh, I am so excited about this next guest that's coming on. Uh, she's kind of new in my world, and I wish I had found her sooner uh, because I am enjoying all her music, and she's got a great story behind her. Please welcome to my corner, Kaylin Cole. Kaylin, how are you doing today? Hi, I am great. How about you? Oh, I am doing wonderful. Thanks for coming on. I know you're busy. You're out there, you know, make, you know, baking and shaking out there. Yeah. You're doing a lot of good things. And uh, yeah. I'm glad you took some time here. But one of the first questions I always like to ask, everybody knows where I am in the Tampa Bay area, but artists are all over the place. Where are you actually calling in from? Yeah, I am calling in from Nashville, Tennessee, and I do just want to say thank you for having me on the podcast. It does mean a lot, um, especially as an independent artist, um, just getting out the word in, you know, different areas. Like, there's probably a lot of Tampa Bay area listeners and a lot of people around that area. And hi, I'm Kaylin, um, and it's great to meet you, and thank you for having me on the podcast. Yeah, we're going to get get to know all about uh, you on the show and, uh, yeah. you know, as, as much as you'll give us anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, you know, not a problem at all. I mean, I love uh, promoting independent artists because I understand, uh, you know, what the budget is like for independent artists. And, uh, yeah. you know, so a lot of these pictures and stuff that I do, uh, you know, I work with uh, artists at no charge for, you know, photos and videos, whatever that they need uh, to help oh. that do that. But you said that you're calling in from Nashville. You've been there for a few years, but you're not originally from Nashville. You're from a little bit further north where it's a little colder. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, especially right now since it's yep. kind of fall. Um, I don't know why, but I just got off a tour from back home. So I'm from Wisconsin and we hit all these different types of cities in Wisconsin. It was really fun. It was my first full band tour. Um, but I think I brought the cold back with me because it is freezing <laughs> in Nashville now. Um, so it's uh, it's like, like that awkward fall right now. Like the weather can't make up its mind quite yet. Um, so it's kind of like you're cold in the morning, sweating in the afternoon, and cold in the evening. So yeah, I get it. And believe yeah. it or not, um, you know, while we're recording this podcast, you know, it's going to come out a little bit later. But while we're doing it, it's actually kind of cold here in Florida. And I say kind of cold because to me, I, I enjoy the uh, you know the '60s and '70s. But to Floridians yeah. that are natively here, uh, they are struggling. You know, they they just took a hurricane. <laughs> they they're okay. They're like, we can handle hurricanes. When it drops below seventy, they they don't know what to do. I know the blood has thinned. Um, by the way, are you safe? Like, how is how is Tampa Bay? right now yeah so uh tampa bay did get uh you know the brunt of the last storm and uh, uh you know milton? milton yes and uh you know of course before that with helene uh a lot on the coast and uh we saw a lot more uh on the inland uh i'm a little further inland and you know fortunately uh everybody in my family's safe which is the most important thing we did not sustain too much damage that i'm aware of but we do have a huge tree uh that fell uh kind of up against our house uh, and up on the second story of our uh, roof here. And so I am not a lumberjack, but I went out and bought a saw. And at nice. some point, I'm going to have to start hacking away at this thing because I'm not paying two grand to have it yeah. uh, removed. So, but uh, yeah, thanks for yourself. checking in. Because there are a lot of people that are still struggling. I got coworkers that don't have electricity yet. And it's been, <laughs> I don't know, like 10 days or how long it's been. So, uh, it's yeah. We have a new name for you, Handyman Hank Jr. <laughs> I don't know about that yet. Let's let's just see if I can take care of this tree first. If yeah, I can't, uh, yeah. but uh, if I can, then I'm going to quote that and say, you know, I got a yeah. new nickname from Kaylin out there. Yeah. 
But uh, let's let's talk more about you. Nobody really wants to come on the or listen to me on the show. Everybody wants to come <laughs> listen to the uh, the guests that are here. And yeah. uh, you know, you got a new song that's out. For those who follow me, know that on Fridays I do a new music Friday Facebook post. Uh, and you know, you can find a lot of the great artists and their music for that week. And we just saw you not too long ago on that post with "See You Tonight." Tell us a little bit about this song. Yeah, so See You Tonight is uh, basically, I wrote that five years ago with my co-writer Grace Palmer, and um, she and I, I remember I still have the notebook of me writing the lyrics down. Now I just write on my MacBook or my phone um, as the times go, uh, but we were just kind of discussing getting to know each other, and I, I'd like to say, this is probably not the first time you've heard this, Hank, but... Uh, I like to say co-writes are a little bit like first dates. Um, you kind of, you know, get to know the person a little bit as to who you're writing with. And usually it's like a good write or sometimes it's like, you know, it's kind of hard to finish the song. So then you kind of, you know, wonder to yourself if is it worth writing again or um, another time? Kind of like a first date. It's like, okay, how was the chemistry? You know, should I go on a second date with them? But Grace and I like hit it off. She's doing her own thing actually back home on the East Coast. Um, she moved back, but she has her own band now. But um, the song is basically about uh, knowing your self-worth deep down and kind of realizing it through a relationship that doesn't suit you and treat you like you should be treated. And through that relationship, you kind of realize like, you know, at the end of the song, it's kind of comes to the realization of what you do deserve. Um, so it's, and it's kind of something that I've been through personally too. So that's why I chose to release it so long after we wrote it. Um, but it actually has a, another song. I have another song coming out by the end of the year that is more of an empowering song to this song. So it's kind of like a, a call and response song to this one. So, okay. Kind of like a little one, two punch there. And, uh, yeah. you know, of course be sure to send the uh, cover art over that. And you guys will be seeing that on the new music Friday post, but until then, yeah. uh, here is see you tonight by Kaylin Cole. me wrapped around your finger like it's nothing and i stutter when you walk by and i try to think of something do you just enjoy the sport are you keeping score got me on your list am i more than just a figure point your finger while you figure out your shit baby i don't mind all the attention, I just wish you wouldn't let me know Not to waste my time Following your misdirection, baby, let me go You don't have no right to come into my life And leave me unsatisfied But baby, I guess oh, I'll see you tonight Shouldn't believe everything I hear, no But what you say and how you say it, well it draws me near And I just wanna hold you close, but you close me off when I have my clothes on Too much pressure pressing down on me now, yeah, I know that this is wrong And 
and I just wish you would've let me know Not to waste my time Following your misdirection, baby, let me go Welcome back to Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr. here with my special guest, Kaylin Cole, and you just heard her recent song, See You Tonight. And I know I'm enjoying it, and I can't wait to give us a little tease about what's coming out uh, later on in the year. So I can't wait for that. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm just loving all the stuff that you uh, put out. And I'm not lying to this. This is not, you know, pumping you up or anything like this. <laughs> but, if, but, but if you go on my Spotify, you will see that there is a like check mark on all of your songs because Aww. every single one of your songs I like. And then you double up because you got some acoustic versions of it and they're checked off as well. So uh, oh, thank I'm you. definitely <laughs> enjoying it. And, uh, you know, we can't wait for more. Um, now, the second part, I always like to get to know about the artist. You get to tell your story. But before we do that, I always like to do the little segment, Two Truths and a Lie. Just started this a few episodes back, and uh, everybody seems to be enjoying that. And it gives me yeah. an opportunity to try to ask questions in a way that I get to know about you without giving it away. And we see if the uh, listeners can figure it out by the end as well. But if you're interested, basically, you give me three statements in any order, two of them being true, one of them being a lie, and then I need to figure that out. So if your game let's uh let's do it all right two truths and a lie here we go um uh my favorite food is peas like frozen canned whatever peas are my favorite food um i have been skydiving before and i have been able to sing with lauren daigle in the past all so, right. So I need to be a little I need to be a little bit careful uh, because I don't want to give too much away, but I'm kind of leaning already to to what I'm going to do. Uh, but uh, definitely, um, you know, I know I know with me, my answer was not going to be my favorite food is not peas. So we could say that uh, I don't mind peas, but uh, they're not my favorite food. Uh, I have not skydive. We'll figure out if you did and, and whether or not you sung with Laura Daigle. Uh, but tell me about your story. Tell me about the Kaylin's story that, you know, you started out there, you know, singing karaoke in Wisconsin. How do you get from there to Nashville? Yeah. So, I mean, I grew up kind of like in a small town. I mean, it was a town of 10,000. It's not super small, but it's not, you know, Madison, Wisconsin or anything like that. Um, just kind of grew up in a simple town. Everybody kind of knew everyone. It, like if you were to go to Walmart, you'd see at least 15 people that you know. So it's not a 20 minute trip. It's actually a two hour trip um, because you just catch up with people. But um, my high school, you know, was pretty small and I was kind of known as the singing girl there. And, um, I was in band and choir and, uh, I just was fully immersed in the, um, uh, arts in high school. And my first trip down to Nashville was because of a talent competition that was actually up North in Wisconsin. And one of the judges was, um, from Nashville, Tennessee. I ended up winning that competition and afterwards he came up to my mom and I and had asked the, me if I've ever been to Nashville and I didn't know what Nashville was really. I didn't know what state it was in. Um, <laughs> and I was just like, uh, no, I have not. Um, so we had kept in contact with this individual, my parents and I, and, um, I really wanted to do music. I, at that time I was around 16, so I didn't really know, I didn't know the reality of it or it didn't come to fruition at that time. I just kind of liked, I knew I liked to sing and I knew I liked to perform. And that's about as much as I knew at that time. Um, I came to Nashville, fell in love with Belmont University, uh, decided when I went back that I wanted to graduate early. So I graduated high school a whole semester early. With that time, I was in a band uh, based in Green Bay. So every single night uh, for Friday and Saturday nights, I would drive up to Green Bay, which is about a two and a half hour drive there in 
um, there. So a five hour drive round trip, but it was worth it because I loved what I did. And, um, I don't honestly know, looking back how I tackled, you know, a 4.3 GPA, um, homework, extracurriculars, and also being in band, um, or in a band. Uh, but I did it God willing. And, um, I just decided to graduate early. So with that time, I took a job as a receptionist at a plumbing company, a local plumbing company. I didn't know anything about plumbing, um, but I knew that it had a paycheck. So I did that and I uh, still performed, but I moved here in November of 2019. And I just, it, I really didn't know what I was signing up for, but I knew for a fact that kind of within those two years, 16 to 18 years old, um, I knew that I didn't go, I didn't want to go to college because I didn't think it really suited my personality. Um, I'm a very extroverted individual. And so it, it doesn't really take much for me to go up to somebody I don't know and start a conversation with them. And I think that's really a core, um, a, a core skill that you need to have when, to, when it comes to networking. So I didn't really lack in that area, um, but all I did for the first six months that I was here, I found three bars. I'm not going to name them because I don't want to get them in trouble, but they didn't ID me. So I was like, <laughs> cool, I'm just going to walk in and network. And, you know, I didn't drink or anything because I wanted to honor that, um, the ability of walking in. But um, before COVID hit in March, that's what I was doing almost every night was I didn't know really a, a lot of people. I had maybe known four people in town. Um, and so I would just go to the bars, network, co-write, and the co-writes turned into songs, which I could perform. I remember the first show that I ever had, um, I was struggling to find three original songs. And now you just see that growth within five years. And now I'm like, what three songs do I want to sing? You know, cause like there's so many that I just really like that I've written with friends and just new co-writers. So um, it's just crazy to see how it has come to reality. And I'm very blessed. I quit my day job about two months ago mm. and I'm doing music full time now. And as an independent musician, that's, that means a lot. And, um, I really don't take a day for granted. Um, I try to get up early and, uh, start my day off right with a nice routine here and there. Um, but yeah, it's just really, it's really nice to be able to live the dream and live what I wanted to do, um, in high school and have like thought that it was super impossible, but now it is possible. So, yeah. Right. And like, and like you said, you know, when you finally get to take that step and you don't have to, you know, work and rely on something else and you can focus on music full time. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it's still a struggle. It's not the easiest thing. I know how musicians tell me all the time and, you yeah. know, it, it is kind of like what they put on TV, the struggling musician. But the, the fact that you can finally do that, it, it definitely means a lot. And it, and it and I can tell that, it, you know, artists like once they reach that point, it's 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 all moving forward and they, they just they just change for the better when that happens. Um, I think so too. But going back, you know, was there anybody, whether, you know, family, friends or in the music industry, people you listen to on the radio that really kind of influenced or inspired you to want to become a musician? Yeah. Uh, first of all, my uncle Jake. Love that guy. Um, he's such a goofball. He's my dad's brother. But when I was younger, I um, looked up to him because he was in a band when he was in his college years, early 20s. Um, and I just thought he was a rock star. And there's a picture floating out there somewhere. I'm pretty sure my grandma has it. But it's with me sitting on his throne behind his uh, drum set with the drumsticks in like hot pink eyeshadow and like my curly hair, which was, you know, like this short at the time I had like a blonde Afro and I just was so, I loved making noise on those drums and he also played guitar and he would just walk around the house. Cause we lived uh, at my grandparents' house for a short period of time. My parents wanted to sell their house before they bought a new one. Um, so we were in the area and we were living with my uncle at the time too, with my grandparents and I just, I was his best friend and he was my best friend. And, um, it's funny because he had kids around the same time 
that I was, you know, my, in my early twenties, I'm still in my early twenties, but he had kids around that time. So it's kind of like a, you know, it's just a funny thing how it kind of just comes back around, but his kids love music too. And they come and see my shows. So it's just, uh, life is weird when it is like that. But, um, he is a big influence. Um, this man, uh, back home, Derek Ramnerace, he's in, he was based in lacrosse, but he lives in Baraboo now. And he has a great band called old soul society. They have about four albums out, but he really started, um, helping me with, you know, finding gigs around Wisconsin, um, looking at, you know, building my platform there so I can be lucky enough to go back and ask, Hey, can I play, you know, at this venue on this day or do you have availability? And most of the time they say yes, which is really nice. Um, cause I know that some people, they just struggle to find live shows that, you know, pay. And so I'm very blessed to be from a state that really likes live music and, in the winter, there's not really much to do other than drink. Um, so <laughs> listening to music and drinking is a little bit better than just drinking. So yeah, yeah, definitely. And you know, and I could just see you know how you light up when you when you talk about your uncle there, and and that's just great yeah. to have that good you know family connection and how that works out. And you know, uh, I think you got a treat for us, you know, the listeners. I I, I think uh, you you have a guitar there off to the side. Oh, yeah. And are, are, are you going to put that to use uh, on the show for us? I might, you know, <laughs> possibly. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to I'm gonna sing you guys a new song that I've written with some really great friends of mine. Um, so this song is called Goner. And, you know, I've written a lot of, like, relationship-based songs. Um, but I kind of wanted to expand um, on my musicality and just like the stories I've been writing. So Marla Cannon Goodman, Lexi Liu and I um, all got into a room and caught up, you know, as we musicians do for a good hour and then wrote this song. And it's all about um, a fictitious character uh, who's just ready to leave everything behind her um, at the split of a second. So it's called Goner, and it's kind of got like a play on words in the chorus, which I think is pretty cool. All right, let's hear it. All righty. I guarantee she's got a suitcase. Tucked up underneath her bed frame. One look inside would be dead in the way. She's always ready to run, ready to jump, ready for the getaway. She's there, take what you want her. She's got a silver tongue on her. With bird in your ear and telling you what you want. You're just a pawn in her game. Oh, cause she's on a whole nother level. You dance and brown with the devil. Better leave her alone or nobody gonna honor. She ain't a hanger on her. No, that girl's a donor. Gone, 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 gone. I guarantee she's got a full tank. No rear view to look back, huh? Cause she ain't. The needle buried in the dash. Just like her heart, just like her past. She's hitting the gas, getting out fast. It's over just like that. Oh, cause she's a you want her she's got a silver tongue on her with burn in your ear just telling you what you want to hear you're just a pawn in her game oh cause 
Nobody knows, nobody knows what haunts her. She's there, take what you want her. She's got a silver tongue on her. Whisper in your ear and tell you what you want to hear. You're just a part in her game. Oh, cause she's on a whole nother level. You dance and brown with the devil. Better leave her alone or don't be gonna own her. She ain't a hanger on her, no. That girl's a goner. And that was Goner by Kaylin Cole. And uh, I know, thank you so much for that uh, treat to be able to uh, listen to that live. And, you know, like I yeah. said, I do do love your voice. do love your songs. And it, it, it's you. great to hear it. And, you know, hopefully one day I'll be able to, uh, you know, hear it in person, whether acoustic or in a band. So uh, yeah, if you ever yeah. do get too cold up there, feel free to come down here to the Tampa Bay area. We'll treat you nice. Hey, I would absolutely love to. Um, I have played in New Smyrna before in Florida and Daytona Beach, and I absolutely loved it. It was a fun festival, and I'm always looking for other opportunities. 100%. So was, was that with my boy Patrick over there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's Patrick. Southern fellow for the guys that uh, follow him as well. You know, I've, I've gotten to see some of the shows that he puts on and another, you know, great person that uh, really believes in uh, promoting independent artists. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, shout out to him. And yeah, just come over to the uh, west side of the state next time when you come west see side. Patrick. <laughs> yeah, it'd be so cool. Yeah. So I want to do something very simple. We'll talk a little bit about it first, but I'm going to do something that I haven't done before on the show. And that's do a triple play of your music because. Okay. Um, there, there are three songs that I, I want to talk about, and they kind of all go together because they, they mention alcohol in it. And the first song I want to talk about, though, is uh, You Ain't Jack. And yeah. the reason why I want to talk about that one is because that is the one, you know, I don't I can't say if I remember hearing any other songs by you. But when I heard that song, I'm like, who is this? I want to know who this is. And mm -hmm. that song is actually what, uh, you know, uh, attracted me uh, to your music. So tell us a little bit about You Ain't Jack. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, so You Ain't Jack was my largest co-write. Um, it was me and four guys. Um, so we were all like, you know, really great pals and we were just kind of hanging out and I brought this idea to the table and I just thought it was kind of funny. Like it derives from the term like You Ain't Jack, you know what? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but I think it's just kind of funny. It's an attitude song. I've always wanted to have one of those. Um, it's upbeat. It's catchy, I think. And it's all about just kind of like, from a girl's perspective, the dating scene in Nashville. And I have seen, I'm not saying every guy's like this because I do love men, um, but I have seen guys in the dating realm um, like when they're at bars, they will, you know, try something or like have a, a punch line or whatever, a pickup line for a girl and she won't buy it. And then he will go a little bit around the bar and try it on the same person or try the same one. And I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, what are you doing? And so that's kind of what inspired the song, to be honest. Um, I just kind of got a crack out of the Nashville dating scene. And um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to write a song about it. And I feel like a lot of people like the song because it's catchy, but they can yep. also kind of relate to it. So. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth on that one because th that's true. I mean, I love the song, but it's something that will stick in your head. And I'm like, I got to listen to it again because it's it's going through my head. And I definitely like that one. Like I said, that's the one that turned me on to your music. Now, yeah. but keeping along the lines of the drinking stuff, uh, yeah. you have a song called Whiskey Wings. And yeah. you got an acoustic version of it. And you did it with, uh, I guess I'm, I'm backwards here. Uh, this lady over here, I don't know if you can tell who it is, but Miss Julia. Uh, uh, yeah, so I got to help her do a, a promotion. Um, Jeff McMahon uh, introduced me to her and, uh, you know, I did a little bit of a, a video for her and I snapped a couple pictures while I was there. But, you know, tell me about you and Julia, because I know you guys uh, perform together. Yeah, so Julielle is one of my favorite people. Um, I would say my favorite person in Nashville. 
Um, she is not only a raging baddie on stage and has a beautiful, you know, full tone to her voice and I could listen to her for hours. Um, all, all the music aside, like she's, She's really killing it here. Um, she moved from Santa Barbara, California to here about two and a half years ago. Um, and I have the honor of being her roommate. Um, oh. So we actually live together. Um, but we also have written together. We've written about 10 songs together now. And uh, Whiskey Wings was the first song that we ever wrote together. This was in December of 2020. Two, I believe. Um, and she decided that she really liked it and wanted to cut it. And I was like, I kind of like it too. And so we came to an agreement. Um, and it is perfectly, you know, allowed in the music industry if, especially if there's two independent artists that love the song that they've written, they can both cut it um, because mm -hmm. they're writers on it. So, um, and she was the perfect person to be able to share that song with um, just because she's a very giving and loving person herself. Um, and I would, I just wanted to have like an acoustic version, um, just because I think the album itself really speaks for itself. Um, the full production album of Bourbon Warfare, but the acoustic album is just really cool because it, it puts the spotlight on the writers of the tunes, um, not just the artist. Um, and I just really really do value the writers in this town um, because without the songs, there wouldn't be anything to produce. There wouldn't be anything to promote. There, it always starts with the song. Um, and I know nowadays that it's not always just the song that makes you big, but it's definitely a big piece of it. Um, so I just really wanted to just have a fun, a fun hangout basically in my backyard. If you guys are interested, I have my uh, videos on my YouTube um, and you can see just the fun that we had in the videos and Julielle and I's Whiskey Wings is just so fun and we had a blast recording it. And it's just really cool to do things with people that you loved and it's just a really special thing to do it with your best friend. So. It was her idea too. She came into the, it was actually her first co-write ever. Okay. Um, yeah. So she has her own version out too. So you guys should go listen to it. Definitely. Okay. So uh, we're going to do a triple play. So we talked okay. about you ain't Jack. We talked about uh, whiskey wings and I'm going to add in there bourbon warfare. Why not? Because that just, uh, you know, wraps it up and we'll come back. We'll wrap it up. Nice.
15 Passing the bottle of brown 90 proof And I'm the only girl around Turn it up and hoping I can keep it down Friday night After a football game One sip and you never feel the same Once you take off You never hit the ground Whiskey waves You can't you drink them all and you can't take them off And you sure as hell pay the price That's the thing There's a first time for everything It takes you all the way to the bottom of the bottle Yeah, you gotta say Before you get your whiskey He's already 16, turns out he's so much like me I guess the apple didn't fall far from the tree Wild child, can't seem to hold her down Staying out, hanging around with the wrong crowd Time to talk, not about the birds and bees Whiskey ways You can't earn a twice Drink them on, you can't take them off And you sure as hell pay the price That's the thing There's a first time for everything Takes you all the way to the bottom of the bottle Yeah, you gotta sink Before you get your whiskey And you sure as hell pay the price That's the thing It's the first time for everything Takes you all the way to the bottom of the bottom Yeah, you gotta sink Before you get your whiskey away Before you get your whiskey away Before you get your whiskey Smell it on your words They cut like a knife Cause you know where it hurts And this bourbon warfare Nobody wins I didn't sign up to fight In this battle that we're in I don't wanna be another Late night casualty So you'll have to choose in pieces in the ground in this house that don't feel like a home can't put it back together but there's still a chance that we could be
Welcome back to Hank's Corner. I'm Hank Jr. here with my special guest, Kaylin Cole. And you just heard a triple play with uh, nothing but alcohol in there. And uh, do, do you have a favorite drink yourself when it comes to alcohol? Uh, yes. Uh, a bourbon old fashioned or whiskey old fashioned is fine. Uh, definitely my number one. But if I need to wake up when I'm out, definitely an espresso martini. Okay. All right. That is that. Yeah, so- I'm a, I'm a whiskey guy myself, and uh, you know I try different whiskeys, but I kind of stick to Crown Royal, uh, all the different flavors of Crown Royal as my go-to. Apple. But Crown I do- Apple is so good. Oh, really? So I actually haven't, or maybe I have. I'm not sure about that one. The one I usually have the most is the the, the caramel salt one. So oh. that one's like very sweet, and you just take your time sipping that, and uh, you know I really enjoy that. Of course, the regular stuff, you know, you just have a good time. It goes down easy. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna twist it a little bit. I I, I kind of changed up how we did the uh, the podcast just because I didn't want to give anything away uh, that I might think I know the answer to. So we'll we'll bring in the uh, you know the two truths and a lie right now and let's see what we got. So you said that your favorite food was peas, mm-hmm. which I'm really hoping it's not. <laughs> um, you you've been skydiving and you got to sing with Lauren Daigle. Now, we, we talked about Julielle being on this side over here. Lauren Daigle is up right here. So yeah. I've gotten to do photos with her. I, I would never got the opportunity to sing with her. Nobody wants to hear me sing. But I did get to uh, get photos from the front row of her, and that was pretty good. So I am going to say that you have sung with Lauren Daigle. Um, ah, man, this favorite food and skydiving is, is, is kind of really throwing me. I'm going to say your favorite food is peas, and you have yet to skydive. What, how did I do on that? You're wrong. Oh, <laughs> where am I wrong so, at? Okay, so I have sang with Lauren Daigle. That was one of my favorite like moments in Nashville thus far. Um, it was for the Dove Awards in 2022, um, and she sang her Hold On To Me song. Mm-hmm. And so she wanted, she needed a choir for that. And so I was, uh, I was in a robe and I was like in a semicircle. And it's so funny because it's, it's hard to find the, the recording of the song for the Dove Awards on YouTube. I don't know why. Maybe they took it down for some reason. Um, but uh, I had an amazing opportunity to sing with her. And um, it was funny because they placed me right behind her. So you see like this blonde afro <laughs> behind her the whole time. So it was really cool. Um, she's a light and a half. And uh, I just love that she's, you know, doing her soul CCM, like jazz music. It's definitely, you can definitely tell she's from Louisiana. So mm-hmm. really cool. So I have done that. Um, my favorite food is mashed potatoes. Oh, um, well, that's better. And, <laughs> yeah. And I have been skydiving with um, one of my really good friends out in Arizona. Uh, she came to Wisconsin and we wanted to do something crazy, um, and we've already gotten two matching tattoos. So we're like, let's do something crazier. Let's go skydiving. And what did you think <laughs> of that? It. it was awesome. My favorite part of it was honestly the free fall because, like, when they open that parachute, it's like, oh, my gosh, it registered. You're like, I'm now in the air, and I'm kind of scared. Um, but, like, the elevation change, the the temperature in the elevation is so cool. Oh, wow. like, when you fall out, it's, like, freezing cold. And then it kind of, like, is humid. And then it, like, you know, evens out to the normal temperature that it's supposed to. Well, I, I'm glad you gave me a good description. I haven't decided to do it yet but one of my goals is possibly to do that and uh, you know i'm not getting any younger uh i do have a good (laughs) life insurance policy and i've always said i'm worth more dead than i am alive but um (laughs) you know i i I may get out there and actually do that one day but you know i did get to sing like i said with lauren daigle and you know my little claim to fame up on stage was i actually got when i was probably about 14 years old got to sing on stage with alabama and it was but but it was like you um in, in, a, in, a, in a group of people, so nobody could actually hear me singing, but they invited kids to come up to sing the cheap seats if you had a baseball hat, and uh, my brother did not want to do it, so I took his hat and I I ran up there, and that's that's my little claim to fame. But cool. you know, even though they're such a great artist, uh, you know, and I, and I want to add this in real quick, uh, you know, Lauren Daigle is such a role model for many many reasons, and and I know you've also worked with, I believe it was Matthew West, and you know, other Christian artists. Uh, you know, tell me, you know, for you, how important is your faith uh, in your daily life and in your music life? Well. 
I like to say that I'm just, I'm not perfect, you know? And I feel like a lot of people, um, so I'm Christian and I feel like a lot of people, um, we like to make sense of things as humans. And so when people think Christian, they have a certain, you know, they have a certain feeling as to what a Christian is or whatever. And um, I, I just like to try to keep my faith close to what would, what Jesus would be like. And so first of all, he loves everyone no matter what. Um, but just because you love someone doesn't necessarily mean you have to agree with them, but it does mean that you have to respect them. And so I try to, I'm not perfect with it, obviously, like I've messed up multiple times. I'm, you know, we're all human, but that's what I try to like to lead with. I like to lead with love and respect, but I don't necessarily have to agree with your opinion um, or the way that you live, but I will respect the way that you live. Um, and I just hope that people do that for me too, because, you know, sometimes Christians get a bad rep, just like any other, you know, belief or philosophy or anything like that. Um, but I kind of just grew up, uh, you know, going to church to a Lutheran church. Um, I got confirmed. I was baptized when I was younger, but I actually, when I moved here, it was really important for me to find a positive community. And I, for me, that was a church. And so I found a church. I was on the worship team for a little bit. Um, and I have kind of wrestled with my faith as one always does. Um, and being in your mid twenties is hard too, when you're alone in like a big city and your family's 600 miles away. But my faith is really important to me. It's not the first thing that I say to someone, but if they do ask, um, I obviously say, yes, I'm a Christian. But I'd like to think that through my actions and words and the way that I treat people, that people are like, oh, you know, she's probably a believer. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. I, I've had great opportunities to sing with Matthew West, to be with Lauren Daigle on stage and sing with her, to sing with Ben Fuller. Um, and it's just kind of weird where God leads you in the Christian realm. And I have a song out that you've mentioned uh, that's on Spotify, and that's the most streamed song that I've done. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what yeah, he's trying so we to mentioned that me, We but. mentioned, sorry to interrupt, but we mentioned that yeah. offline. So uh, for those that want to go check it out on Spotify, it's called Thy Works, Not Mine. Uh, great song. Like you said, it, it, it has been strung out. And, you know, you talk about not being perfect, but but that is the, the you know, the reason why Jesus came anyway. He came to save those who weren't perfect. And, exactly. you know, it's just, it, it, and so... Uh, anytime I get the opportunity to bring faith onto my show, I'm going to do that. So I appreciate you telling your story and, sure. uh, you know, it's great that you are faith based. And of course, you know, none of us are perfect, but that's why we need him. But, you know, thanks so much for, you know, sharing that and, you know, continue to be, uh, you know, a role model yourself. Cause I, I know that you are. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just wish you well for, for many reasons, including Thank that. You. Thank you. And it, I saw something online the other day. It said, you know, Jesus was perfect and he still had people that hated him. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so true though, because like, I'm, I don't try to be perfect. I accept my flaws and, you know, try to be better every single day. But, um, so I just, I have a, I struggle with people like not liking me, um, sometimes. And I just have to remind myself, like people, not everybody liked Jesus and he was perfect. So you're fine. So. Yeah. And those are definitely great words to end with. And, uh, you know, I definitely appreciate that. But, you know, uh, Kaylin, you know, it, it's been great talking to you. You know, if you ever want to be a guest on Hank's Corner, you're more than welcome to. I would absolutely love to. Yes, I would love to be here again. So thank you so much for your time, Hank Jr. <laughs> Your mouth moving, but that's all you're doing. Don't see many reasons to stay in this house. So you do what you do best. Well, I'm working on packing my bags. You just keep working on nothing but Jack. You're gonna miss me when you're tipsy. But I'll be long, long gone before that. 
wanna get hard and I feel so down But I've gone restless, ran out of patience And I'm slamming that pedal to the ground When I'm done working on packing my bags You just keep working on nothing but jack You're See you. 